Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and this is our second video in our series on time zones. And in this video, we're going to look at a variety of simple and complex questions for calculating time differences. Now this video, our first focus is going to be looking on calculating some basic time differences using UTC, GMT and Daylight Savings. Then we're going to move on to using our coordinates of latitude and longitude to work out the time difference between two places and look at some more complex questions that combine different elements. So firstly, our first example. Fred lives in Brisbane, GMT plus 10, and wants to call Mary in Los Angeles, GMT minus 8. What is the time difference? Well, I always think it's a great idea whenever you've got any of these kinds of worded questions to draw a picture of some kind to show you what's going on. And I like to use a timeline. I think a timeline is a great visual to explain who is where and what's happening. So firstly, when I do this, I draw a straight horizontal line and put a little stroke down the center and a zero. That represents our Greenwich mean time, zero. And then I'm going to pop on Fred, who's in Brisbane. And thinking of a normal number line, our positive numbers are to the right of zero. So that's why that one's plus 10. And Mary is in Los Angeles and she's going to be minus eight. Now straight away, because I've drawn this little picture, I've got a great visual of how many hours these two cities are apart. I can see just by looking at it that it's going to be a time difference of 18. But it's also important to show that with some maths as well. So let's start by calculating the time difference using some maths. So firstly, I'm going to write down Fred's time, GMT plus 10. And the time difference, now the word difference implies subtraction or takeaway. So I need to do a takeaway symbol to work out the difference. And Mary's minus 8. So now notice I've got a minus and a minus. That becomes plus 10 plus 8. And we definitely could see that visually on our timeline. And that's why it's not 10 takeaway 8, it's 10 subtract negative 8. So I've got a time difference of 18 hours. So I hope that just seeing that little timeline, how that creates a great visual for you to work out the difference in time between two places, I would always recommend it only takes a few seconds to draw. So I'm going to use that particular skill right across my video today. Now let's look at a slightly more complex example. Example two, Alana lives in Perth, which is UTC plus eight, and she wants to call Svetlana in Moscow, which is UTC plus three. Now, the time in Perth is 4 a.m. on Saturday. What time is it in Moscow? So once again, let's draw a timeline, starting with zero. And because both of them are on the positive side, I've drawn the zero a little bit further over to the left this time. So now I've got Svetlana. She is plus three UTC and Alana is UTC plus eight. Now, in our previous video, I did explain the difference between GMT and UTC. Basically, if you've got a GMT of plus 8, it also means you've got a UTC of plus 8 as well. So even though they're different letters, don't panic. You treat them in exactly the same way to work out time differences. They do mean slightly different things, but for the purpose of what you need to do with calculations, if you see different letters, just go with it, use the numbers. Okay, so now we can see on this timeline that we've got a five-hour time difference between Svetlana and Alana. That's fairly obvious, but we do need to show the calculations for full marks. So our second step is to calculate that time difference using the maths. So firstly, I've got positive eight, subtract three, because the time difference means subtraction. So I've got that five-hour time difference, which I could definitely see with my timeline and the visual. Okay, so now that I've calculated the time difference, I need to work out what time it is in Moscow. So firstly, we know Perth is five hours ahead of Moscow. That's important for us to get our head around. And that's why I like the timeline visual, because it shows me that a line is ahead and not behind. So if it's going to be 4 a.m., that means Moscow's five hours back the other way. So what I need to do is I need to subtract five hours from Perth's time. So I'm going to take Saturday at 4 a.m. and go back five hours. Now, four hours will take me back to midnight, and then one more hour will take me back to 11 p.m. the day before on Friday. So it's always important that whenever you state an answer for time difference questions, that you always state what day it is and what time it is, because sometimes it is a different day. Even if it's the same day as what you worked out, you need to state a day and a time for four marks. Let's look at something even more complex now. I've got Angie who lives in Las Vegas, GMT minus eight. 
She wants to call a company based in Hobart GMT Plus 10 at 9am on Monday to make a complaint. Hobart's currently on daylight savings time. So what time in Las Vegas should Angie make her call? So guess what? We're going to do a timeline again. Okay, so starting with zero in the middle, I'm going to put Angie over here. She's negative eight minus eight in Las Vegas and Hobart's positive 10. Now I'm also going to add that one hour because if they're on daylight savings time, that means they still remain in the same time zone, GMT plus 10, but their clocks are one hour forward. So I'm going to add plus one, which means she's actually GMT plus 11, technically speaking. And DST stands for daylight savings time. So now I've got a good picture in my head of that actual time difference between the two places. So now what I need to do is positive 10 plus the one for the time difference with the daylight savings. And now I'm going to subtract Angie's time minus negative 8. And those minus minuses change to a plus. So I've got 10 plus 1 plus 8, which gives me a 19 hour time difference between Angie over in Las Vegas and the company over in Hobart. So now I need to work out what time it is in Hobart and that Las Vegas call needs to be made. So firstly, let's find that time in Las Vegas when it's 9 a.m. on Monday in Hobart. So Las Vegas, we can see on the timeline, they are 19 hours behind Hobart. So I'm going to take 9 a.m. Monday and subtract 19 hours and go back in time to the previous day. Now, whenever I'm doing anything more than 12 hours or more than 24 hours, I like to break it up into 12 hour or 24 hour chunks. I'm going to show you how I do that here. It makes it a lot easier to count backwards from a time that's small like 9am when you work at it in chunks. So that 19 hours is actually made up of 12 and 7 hours. And because I've broken it up into subtracting 12 and then subtracting 7, it's very easy for me to quickly make that change from 9am Monday to 9pm Sunday. If I quickly go back 12 hours, the am switches to pm the day switches to the day before. Now all I've got to do is subtract seven hours. So it makes it a lot easier than counting back 19. So now 9 p.m. takes seven hours away, it gives me 2 p.m. on Sunday. And once again, don't forget to state your day and your time. So just to quickly recap on that, if I have anything where I'm calculating and adding or subtracting more than 12 hours, what I do is I break up that more than 12, if it was 14 hours, it'd be 12 plus two. If it was 18 hours, it'd be 12 plus six. And then I flick from AM to PM or from PM to AM. And then I take the remainder off. I find that a really useful strategy just to do that quickly in my head and to make fewer mistakes. Okay, the way I would set my working out for this, because you did see that over several slides, and sometimes it's good just to see the working in the one place. So I've got 9 a.m. Monday, take away 19 hours, becomes 9 a.m. Monday, take away 12, take away 7, flip the 9 a.m. to a 9 p.m., flip the day to the day before, because you've gone back 12 hours, and then take seven more hours off. Always also good to write a statement at the end, and that's why I've said in bold there, Angie should make the call on Sunday at 2 p.m. We're going to look at something quite a bit more complex now. Simba lives in Cape Town, GMT plus two, and is flying to Lima, GMT minus five. The first flight is 12 hours and five minutes, with a 16-hour layover in London. That's horrendous. The second flight is 16 hours and 55 minutes. He's going to be traveling for a very long time. And this is an actual real flight that I found off Google Flights. Now, if Simba leaves Cape Town on Monday at 10.55 a.m., when will he arrive in Lima in Peru, South America? So there's a lot going on in this particular question. We've got two flights. We've got a gap in between the two flights. We've got two different time zones. We've got to work out what the time is in one time zone. Always a good idea to have a process and to understand what you're doing in situations like this. And the first thing I would do is work out how long is the total flight time going to be. I would do that first. So I'd start with the flight time and it's always a good idea to use some words as well because there's lots of, good, lots of different calculations that you're going to be doing. It's a good idea to communicate to the marker what you're doing and where you're doing it. So start by writing flight time. So we're going to have the 12 hours and the 5 minutes added to the 16 hours, added to another 16 hours, added to another 55 minutes. So I've got all of those written down there. If we bring those together, we've got a 45 hour 
time that he's going to be taking to get from one destination to the next. That's pretty full on, but people do do that quite regularly. They just don't feel very great afterwards. Okay, so our next step is to work out what's the time that he would be landing in Cape Town time when he lands in Lima. Now, obviously, when you would leave, you would have to change your watch a couple of times throughout the process because otherwise he's going to miss that layover and the flight in London. So he would have to change his watch there and he would general, generally change his watch again when he arrives in Lima. However, for the purposes of this question, we're going to just leave his watch and assume it's left on Cape Town time for the entire flight. Okay, so we're going to find out what would happen, what would be the time after he spent 45 hours flying, what would be the time still where he has left. So we're going to take Monday, 10.55 a.m. We're going to add 45 hours to that. So let's break that 45 hours up. Now, as I said before, whenever we've got blocks of 12 hours, we're going to break them up into 12 hours. But here we've got something that's more than 24 hours. So let's break it into blocks of 24 and 12. So firstly, we've got Monday, 10.55 a.m., plus 24 hours, plus 12 more hours, plus nine more hours. Now, you're going to see the beauty of doing it this way in a moment because it's going to make it really simple. Rather than starting at 10.45, 10.55 and counting one, two, three on, we're only going to have to do it a couple of ways. So let's have a look. Now, we've got Monday, 10.55 a.m. Because we're going forward 24 hours, we can then jump straight to the next morning. Don't have to change the time. That's a nice, sweet way of doing it. Now let's add on 12 hours. Because we're in the morning, we're just going to add on 12 hours and make it the evening. It's still going to be the same day. It's just moved forward 12 hours. We're now at 10.55 p.m. All we had to do is change a.m. to p.m. Now we're going to have to cross over into the next day with those next nine hours. It's going to be Wednesday, 7.55 a.m. So the only real adding we had to do, some of you might need to do it on your fingers, is going to be that last nine. So that makes it a lot easier than trying to add on 45. So now we've worked out what time it is in Cape Town when he lands in Lima, but what time is it at his local time? Now we need to work out that time difference. So let's start by drawing that timeline again. Zero in the middle. We've got Lima on the left, negative five, and Cape Town on the right, positive two. We can see very clearly that there's a time difference of seven hours, but we need to show that mathematically, of course. So we're going to do plus two, take away negative five, gives us plus two plus five, which is a seven hour time difference. So now we've worked out his time in Cape Town, but Lima's behind seven hours. So we need to actually take that seven hours off that Wednesday, 7.55 a.m. when he lands. So there we go. We're going to take that seven hours away. It's now 12.55 a.m. That's just after midnight in Lima. So he's going to be wrecked. So it's always a good idea to finish that by writing a statement. Symbol will arrive in Lima on Wednesday at 12.55 a.m. So that's our second last question. Let's move on to the last question. Okay, we're on to our last example now. Now this one's a little bit different. This time we're not told GMT or UTC. We're actually given latitude and longitude. Now, some textbooks, I know, for example, the Jacaranda textbook in its first edition doesn't do any questions using latitude and longitude, but it's important that you know how because it's in the syllabus. So firstly, we need to recall, and if you get stuck and you're not sure how to do it, this is what you need to remember. There's 360 degrees in a circle and 24 hours in a day. So therefore, you can break the world up into 24 time zones Doing 360 divided by 24 tells you that for every line of longitude, you're passing through 15 degrees. So let's draw it on a timeline again. Now this time I've got um, zero, which is my prime meridian. Now I'm focusing on the west and the east, our different measurements there. So I've got Los Angeles, 120 degrees west and Sydney, 150 degrees east. And the reason why I'm drawing this on a timeline is that gives me a really good mental picture that because they're in different parts of the world there, that I've actually got um, a longer time difference there between the two. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is work out that angular difference between the two. So I've got the 150 on the one side and the 120 on the other side. When I add those together, I get 270 degrees difference. Now, remembering that each of those degrees of um, 
longitude lines are 15 degrees. So we're going to divide that angular difference by 15 degrees. So 270 degrees divided by 15 gives us 18 or 18 hours. So that means there's an 18 hour difference between Los Angeles and Sydney. So now we're going to subtract that 18 hours from our Sydney time because we weren't just asked to find the time difference. We've now done that. We were actually asked to work out what time it is in LA. We know LA is behind us. We can see that very clearly on that timeline now. So we're going to take 18 hours away from 8 a.m. Saturday. So remember what we said before about breaking anything up more than 12 hours into chunks. So I'm going to break that 18 hours into two chunks of 12 hours and 6 hours. Makes it very easy for me to switch with that 12 hours backwards. It's the day before now, 8 p.m. Friday. And we take 6 hours from there. Becomes a very easy subtraction. 8 take away 6 gives us Friday, 2 p.m. And we should always finish that by writing a statement. The time will be 2 p.m. Friday in Los Angeles. Well, once again, that's all we've got time for today. There were some big examples in there, lots to unpack. I would really suggest if you got a little bit lost because I moved quite quickly that you might want to go back and pause a little and practice some more yourself. Thank you so much for your feedback and for all the wonderful comments and emails that you send me. We can be followed on Facebook now as well and do like and subscribe to the channel. Have a lovely day.